Welcome back to Jack Rants. My name is Q, and today let's talk about do smartphones really need to be priced as high as they are? Honestly, let's talk. All right, so I've covered flagships, I've covered budget phones, I've covered mid range. I've talked about everything, and this conversation has came up plenty of times before, but I have to bring it up again. Do smartphones really need the price tags that they have? And do, you know, better yet, do they need the price tag and specifications that they have? I mean, honestly. Now, let's go over a few things. So, do a recap. The Galaxy S10e, the S10 Plus, the regular S10, the S10 5G, and the Galaxy F were announced on Wednesday. Prices for the S10e start at $749. Prices for the S10 start at $899. Prices for the S10 Plus start at $999. Don't know what the price of the S10 5G is. Excuse me. And prices for the Galaxy F foldable phone started $1,980 freeze. Last one? Yeah, sure. I repeat that last one. Prices for the Galaxy F foldable phone start at $1,980. Let it sink in for a minute. Let it sink in. But let's talk about it. Now, they offered some very neat features and some very impressive specs for all of these phones. Okay, yeah, you got the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, all these cameras. I don't think all these cameras are necessary, honestly. Um, You know, but uh, better displays. Uh, The Snapdragon 855 processor, which is a 7 nanometer processor, which is supposed to make, you know, more power efficiency and things of that nature, um, you know, just not too bad, actually. You know, it's, it, I was very impressed. I wish I could actually get my hands on them. But honestly, the biggest thing was 12, if you get the highest configuration on each model, except for the S10e, so the S10, S10+, Plus, and the foldable phone, get the highest configuration, 12 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage. Let me say that for you again. 12 gigs of RAM. One terabyte of storage. Freeze again. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it all for dramatic effects. But you guys don't know. Like, those are some crazy specs. We have never seen those in a smartphone. Now, when the OnePlus 6T McLaren Edition came out with 10 gigs of RAM, and it was only 700 bucks, I thought that was a reasonable price because you have the McLaren logo, and 10 gigs of RAM is unheard of. Now, here's the thing. Honestly, I don't think that much RAM is needed in a phone, especially for the average consumer. Now, the OnePlus 6T, they can get the praise that, Most people thought it should have got from me, but I had the OnePlus 60, and it ran more than capable on 8 gigs of RAM. I had the Note 9 with 6 gigs of RAM. It ran more than capable. I had the Honor 7X with 3 gigs of RAM, and it ran very capable. It was $200. I had the Essential phone with 4 gigs of RAM. It ran smoothly with no problems. I have the iPhone 8. It has 2 gigs of RAM, and it runs buttery smooth okay so which brings me to my point so the pricing those prices are ridiculous meanwhile over way over there yonder in china got a company called yuma digi i know i'm saying it all wrong but it's called uma digi yuma digi however you say it they have a phone two phones that are going to caught that caught my eye and we're going to talk about these two phones very quickly so the first one is 200 bucks called the Yuma Digi F1. 
It's $200 on Amazon. It has the Helio P60 processor, which is a which is kind of like the flagship processor of MediaTek. Now, most people bash MediaTek processors. I my experience with MediaTek processors, they work fine. They are very snappy. They do have the tendency to slow down every now and then as time goes on, but for the most part, they're snappy and they definitely get the job done. So they're like the flagship processor of the of the um, of the MediaTek world. So MediaTek Helio P60, four gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, a 6.3 inch display. It's an HD display, full HD, 5,150 milliamp hour battery. What did you say? I said a 5,150 milliamp hour battery. Dual cameras on the back, camera on the fronts. 4K recording, wireless charging, fast charging, headphone jack, comes with a case and screen protector installed. What is the price on that again? $200. Those are flagship specifications on a $200 phone. Then they have the Juma DG S3, I believe it's what it's called. Six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, a little bit better processor, you know, pretty much the same specs, but it's 269. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention these phones also have expandable memories, but SD card slots. Now, Samsung, Apple, even Google. You're pricing your phones too high. Let's get serious for a minute. I've done all the dramatic effect. Let's let's have a serious talk. You're pricing your phones too high. Okay? Now, the reason why people buy these phones is because of the cool factor and the the name brand reliability. But you take at companies like Umadigi, even like new a company called New Mobile, they have a phone that's coming out that's going to have kind of those same features. It's going to be two hundred and twenty bucks. Okay, these phones, you know, most people are not going to buy them, of course, because like I said, they're they're made in China. They're Chinese brands, and the U.S. has a rocky relationship with China at the moment. And you know, they're they're, they're never heard of. But. You take a company like OnePlus. Now, I think OnePlus is a little bit price high, but they're trying to make themselves known in the flagship world, which they have done. With the partnership that OnePlus has created with T-Mobile, they have slid their way into the top five of the premium smartphone brand here in the U.S. And I'm proud of OnePlus. I really am. I really am proud of them because they make a solid product. I may not have liked the OnePlus 6T, but overall, it wasn't for me, but it was a damn good phone. And I'm very proud of OnePlus. I'm glad to see somebody other than Apple or Samsung take the top spot. Now, I use an Apple product, so I'm not bashing Apple. I've used Samsung products. I'm not bashing Samsung. But I just get you just get tired of seeing these two names. It's time for somebody else to come in and show us something new. And the fact that these companies like Umadigi and, and New Mobile, they're making companies, and, and, and even like Blue. You know, everybody knows who Blue is. Blue. These companies are making phones for way less, and they're having these pretty much flagship features. There is no way in this day and age that you should go out and spend $1,000 on a smartphone. Now, just because I do it doesn't mean you should do it. I do it for my own personal reasons. If you really want to do it, I'm doing more power to you. But I'm here to tell the average consumer and anybody that wants to know. $1,000 $1,000 does not have to be your budget to get a decent phone. It doesn't. You can get a really nice phone, a really reliable, good phone for under 300 bucks in this day and age. And that's just reality. So, you know, 
for Samsung, I, they didn't go as high as I thought they would. I mean, of course, the top configuration for the S10 Plus is probably going to be about 1600 bucks. But the 2000 I'm sorry, the $1,980 for the, the, what is it called? The Galaxy F foldable phone is ridiculous. It really is. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, yeah, a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks for a smartphone is uncalled for and it's not necessary. Let me know what you guys think. This was helpful, fun, and if entertaining in any way. Leave a comment, uh, leave a like on the video, comment down below what you guys think, subscribe if you enjoy the content, tell your friends, all the other good stuff, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.